Well, hello, Xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about some cheap starter lenses that you can buy if you're fairly new to using vintage lenses. There are an astonishing number of these lenses available, and it can be quite a daunting task to choose your first one. So today, we're gonna to look at the affordable options that will allow you to have a look at a range of different lenses, experiment a little bit, find your creative vision, and find which lenses suit you. One great advantage that vintage lenses have is that they're actually quite cheap. There's a whole range of vintage lenses available in any number of focal lengths, certainly in all the common focal lengths, from around 30 to 50 pounds or thereabouts. So they really are cheap and there really is a considerable price advantage. Another point is that vintage lenses have flaws. They were calculated, the radiuses of their uh, various lenses and components were calculated um, using the old school methods. There were no computers involved and so therefore there were flaws that crept in to those optical calculations. There were also flaws in the grinding of the glasses and those flaws can come together in a vintage lens and give you some really beautiful effects. Um, so when is a flaw really a flaw? Technically these things are flaws, but actually aesthetically they can give you some really fantastic images. So those are two really good reasons to try vintage lenses out. One important thing to remember is that you don't necessarily need a very fancy lens. Sometimes a cheaper alternative will do the job very nearly just as well. And a good case in point, this is the Jupiter 8 f2 50mm lens. It's a beautiful little thing. It has an aluminium body. This is a, a, an aluminium silver finish. They also did them in black finish as well. They're probably more common. It's a rangefinder lens. It focuses from one meter out to infinity. Uh, and it's a lovely, lovely little piece of kit. I've made some really nice images with this one and it's a lens I like very much. Here we have the Leica Summitar f2 50mm and this is a genuinely beautiful thing. It's exquisitely well made. There is, when I turn the dials, absolutely no play. Uh, all the tolerances are very tight. It's made of steel. The body is steel rather than aluminium. And it's a very, very beautiful thing. The optics are wonderful. It makes some stunning images. Um, the colour is nice. It's a little bit warmer than the Jupiter. The Jupiter is slightly cooler sort of lens will give you a more of a bluish sort of look. However, the difference between these two lenses in image quality is not that great. The Jupiter can be bought for between 30 to 40 pounds or thereabouts. The Leica lens probably around 300 to 350, maybe a little bit more. They do very, very nearly the same job and to all but the most intense analytical looking at an image, you really couldn't tell the difference between them. So that's an important thing to remember. You don't need to buy the fanciest, most expensive lens. It's important to remember that what makes a lens good is entirely subjective and it's entirely dependent on your own taste what aesthetic results you want to achieve and the kind of look that you want. So what this is about is not possessing or buying the necessarily the best spec sort of lens, the lens with the highest specification. What it's really about is making beautiful images and finding your own creative style, your own artistic vision while you're doing that. And guess what? You can make a beautiful image with any lens. 
And don't forget, with vintage lenses, if you don't like them, they don't lose their value. As long as you don't pay too high a price in the first place, you can sell them on. You can't do that with modern lenses, but vintage lenses at the moment seem to be holding their value pretty well. So what's actually available? What lenses are out there that you can play around with and experiment with? Well, let's start with the Russians. If you're a regular viewer to this channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Russian lenses. You may from time to time hear chatter online about how Russian lenses are unreliable, how quality control wasn't very good, how you have to buy 10 lenses to find one good one. Let me bust that myth now. I've, well, how many of these lenses have passed through my hands? Probably a hundred or so, maybe more. And in all of those lenses, I've only had one bad one. And that had clearly been tampered with it, clearly been taken apart, put back together, probably not very well because it wouldn't focus to infinity. So I suspect the, the uh, focus in helicoids hadn't been put back in the right place. So in all of those lenses, I only found one dud and that had clearly been opened and not been put back together properly. So in my experience, this idea that Russian lenses are very, very lacking in quality control just doesn't hold water. So let's have a look at the kinds of lenses that are available from the old Russian manufacturers. Well, this is a very common Russian lens. This is the Indostar 61. It's an f2.8 50mm and it's a rangefinder lens so it focuses down to three feet and out to infinity. This is a very, very, very nice little lens and it's really cheap as well. These lenses are available what, from between 10 to 15 pounds, something like that. They really are very cheap. It's a very simple lens. It's a Tessar design, so it's very sharp. It's fairly low contrast. It's not the blurriest lens in the world, but it will give you some nice blur and it will soften out the background and focus attention on your subjects. A very nice little lens, well worth a look. We've also got the Jupiter 8. We've briefly mentioned this already, an f2 50mm, beautiful little lens, one of my favourites, uh, one of the faster Russian 50mm's, very, very nice little thing. Um, let's see what else we've got. We've got here the Jupiter 11, this is a 135mm lens, an f4 135mm. Um, this lens will give you some really spectacular images. It's got beautiful background blur, it's very sharp, and you can buy these from around 30 to 40 pounds. Very, very nice little lens. We've also got this beautiful little thing. This is the Indostar 50. This is the solid mount version. They were also made in a collapsible mount. It's an f3.5 lens, so again, it's not the blurriest lens in the world, but it's very, very sharp, and it gives really stunning colours. I mean, really stunning. One of the nicest lenses for colour that I know, actually. Very, very cheap as well in solid mount. This is a favourite lens of mine, one of my all-time favourite lenses, a lens I've used extensively. This is the Helios 44. It's a beautiful little lens. It is a f2, 58mm, so it's got a little more reach than a standard 50. It's an SLR lens, so it will focus down to 50 centimetres. It's based on the old Zeiss Biotar formula, and so it will give you the swirly bouquet in the background, if that's what you like. And in fact, in a recent video, I compared this uh, lens, the Helios, to the original Biotar that it was based on, and I found the images from the Helios were actually a little bit nicer. These lenses sell from between 30 to 40 pounds. You don't have to pay any more than that for one. This is one of the eight blade uh, eight aperture blade versions, but you can sometimes find 
the rather sought after 13 blade aperture versions for around the same price and I have bought a couple of those myself beautiful little piece of kit and a really good lens to experiment and play around with here is that lens's big brother this is not a cheap Russian lens but I thought I'd mention it anyway just to show you uh, the kind of wild optics that you can get for what it is it's actually quite cheap it's an f1.5 85 mil so it's quite fast it's based on an old 1930s Zeiss design um, and it's a beautiful beautiful lens it's really an art lens it gives you loads of swirly bokeh far more than the Helios 44 it's not very sharp wide open but that's pretty good for portraits it's nice to have uh, a soft looking portraits it's not the cheapest Russian lens this one sells for around 250 to 300 however it is cheap for what it is and if you want a lens that makes absolutely unique images this is one that you might consider East German lenses let's talk about the East German lenses here is a very commonly available East German lens this is the Pentacon 50 millimeter f 1.8 this is a later version they made these lenses for years and years and I think it's a descendant of one of the old Meyer optic lenses although I may be wrong it's a really nice lens it'll give you some very nice images and you can buy these for 20 to 30 pounds it's an SLR lens so it will focus down to ah 33 centimeters which is really close I do like a lens that focuses close and if you've got that close-up feature on your lens it makes it far more versatile and in fact a lot of these German lenses do have that feature and they do focus down quite a lot more closely than a lot of the Western lenses of the era that's the Pentacon we can't mention East German lenses without talking about some of my favorite lenses ever the Carl Zeiss Jenner lenses this is a Carl Zeiss Jenner 50mm f1.8 pan -colar. Uh, it's actually on a tilt adapter at the moment it's not that large as it looks here's the lens this is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever shot with colors are unparalleled on this lens it knocks most other 50 mil f1.8 or f1 point anything else come to that right into the weeds it, it's just so nice very very sharp beautiful colors very nice background blur one or two harsh spots here and there but it's easy to shoot around this lens is one of the nicest vintage lenses you can buy and these sell for around about a hundred pounds very very nice piece of kit now the Zeiss Jenner Pancola is not a particularly cheap lens it's certainly more expensive than 40 to 50 pounds but it's very cheap and very very good value for what it is there is no other lens that will give you the sharpness and the color saturation that this lens will give you at anything near a comparable price so for what it is it's pretty cheap this is the Carl Zeiss Jenner Tessar lens it's an f2.8 50 mil lens this lens too is extremely sharp it's a really good alternative to the pan cola and perhaps the best thing about this lens is its price it sells for between 20 to 40 pounds and it's a really really nice piece of kit it's not particularly fast at f2.8 but in common with most Carl Zeiss Jenner lenses it focuses pretty close this lens goes down to 35 centimeters and if you shoot close you get maximum blur and it's comparable to lenses with a much wider aperture a really really nice lens and well worth considering another Carl Zeiss Jenner 
Here's the 135mm f3.5. It's got all of the Carl Zeiss Jenner qualities. It's very nicely made. It gives beautiful colours. It's very sharp. It's a beautiful little lens. These are available between 30 to £40 or thereabouts. Really good value. Western lenses. There are a great many Western lenses available very cheaply in a number of focal lengths. It's not just lenses from the former Soviet countries that you should be considering. For example, here is a really, really nice lens. This is an Olympus lens. Olympus lenses are very beautifully made and I think they are equal to the little Leica lens that I showed you earlier in engineering excellence. They are very, very nicely made. And this is the f1.8 50mm and it's quite cheap. This lens you can buy for around about £40 or thereabouts. It's sharper than the 50mm f1.4 from Olympus. Many people prefer it. It's a very solid, very nicely made lens that will give you some fantastic images. Pentax lenses. Here are two Pentax lenses. This is the f1.4 50mm, a very highly celebrated, very highly regarded lens, gets loads of praise online. Here's its little brother, the f1.8 55mm. Auto Takamar, the f1.4 is a Super Takamar, I'm not quite sure what the difference is. I've shot both these lenses quite a lot. I much prefer the f1.8. It's sharper than the f1.4, it's got nicer colour, it's got nicer background blur. In fact, the background blur on this little f1.8 is pretty much unflappable. There are very few harsh spots, if any, that I've been able to find while I've been using this lens, whereas on the 1.4, there are quite a few harsh spots in the background blur. So again, more expensive doesn't always mean better. Wider aperture doesn't always mean better. These lenses are very beautifully made. Let's put the f1.4 down a moment. Very beautifully made. This little 1.8, I bought it recently and I think I paid about 25 or £30, pounds, something like that, very little money. It hadn't been well cared for, it had obviously led a hard life, but luckily the glass was intact, no scratches, and mechanically it feels like new. It's silky smooth, everything works fine, they're very long lived, very well made beautifully engineered little lenses. You could do a lot worse than try a 55mm Auto Takamar f1.8 from Pentax. Here's a little Ricoh 50mm. This is an f2 50mm lens. These lenses are really cheap, I don't really know why. It's got a K mount. There is quite a bit of plastic used in its construction, but it's a really nice lens with wonderful optics. You can buy one of these for around about £30. Beautiful little bit of kit. Canon FD lenses. Don't overlook the Canon FD lenses. They are beautiful optics and they tend to be rather cheaper than other SLR vintage lenses from other Western manufacturers like Olympus and Pentax and Nikon. I don't know why that should be. Perhaps it's because there's a little more plastic used in their construction, but they're tough, durable, well-made lenses and all the inner parts, the engineering parts that matter are of course all metal. This I think is the F1.4, oh no, this is the 28mm F2.8. This is a very, very nice little lens, makes a great street shooter, available for around 40 to 50 pounds. Um, we've also got a 50 mil. This is the f1.4. This is a beautiful lens. Um, it has a little brother, the f1.8, which is also a beautiful bit of kit. It makes stunning images, really, really nice. The f1.8 will cost you around 30 to 40 pounds if that the f1.4 is a better lens 
uh, in this case. This F1.4 I recently bought together with a Canon T70 camera for all of £26. So there are real bargains in these Canon FD lenses. I'm not quite sure why that should be because their optics are some of the nicest in the business. But that's how it is and that's to our advantage. Nikon lenses. Don't forget Nikon lenses. This is a little Nikon Series E 50mm f1.8. It's a beautiful little lens. Very, very nice all-purpose general shooter walk-around lens. Nikon lenses, to some extent, you do pay for the name. Um, I'm not quite sure why that should be, but it's so. Maybe there are more Nikon collectors than collectors of other lenses. These Series E lenses, uh, this little 50mm, will probably sell for between 50 to 60 pounds, something like that, maybe 40 to 60, but they do tend to be a little more expensive. The image quality isn't particularly any better than any of the other lenses of the period. In fact, I'm not sure that it's even quite as good as some of them. Certainly the Canon ones take some beating. Um, Nikon lenses have a very flat colour profile in my experience. I've not shot a great many of them, uh, but in my experience um, they do have a fairly flat colour profile. And it's a very individual look that they have, very much a Nikon look. Uh, if that looks for you, these lenses are great value. Don't overlook simple zoom lenses. Uh, kit zoom lenses. This is a Nikon kit zoom lens. It has a very odd focal length, as I recall, 43 to 86 millimeters. This lens I bought fairly recently for £25. And you may think, oh, well, a kit lens is it, it, it's a bit simple, it's a bit limiting. And yes, it is. But you can make great images with it if you work within its limitations and don't expect more from it than it can give. I actually really like this little lens. It's uh, it's very much the underdog, but it does. I've have made some really nice images with it and uh, I do quite like it. And that's another thing, you do have to bond with a lens. I know that sounds silly, but you have to like something about a lens. You have to get on with it. You have to like the way it feels. You have to like the images it makes, of course. You have to like the way it looks. Um, there are certain lenses that I, I, I don't get on with, not because they're not good lenses, but I just can't bond with them. Um, and you do have to have an affinity for the equipment that you're using. So again, that's another reason for experimentation and looking at a range of different lenses. Now, in the previous episode, I looked at some Konica lenses and these are really great value at the moment. I recently bought four of them, plus a Konica film SLR for £130 and that included a 28mm, a 50mm f1.7, uh, a 40mm f1.8, a brilliant lens for street photography, and a 135mm f3.2. Not sure where I've put that just now. Oh yeah, that's here. Um, these lenses are really cheap. They have a very distinctive, very unique colour signature and they're pretty sharp as well. They make some really beautiful images and they're very, very, very nicely made. And they are, did I mention, really cheap. Really good lenses to do a little bit of experimentation with. So, as I hope you can see, there are loads of vintage lenses available at very little cost that will allow you to experiment, to play around, to find your creative vision and to enhance that creative vision. And really, that's what this is all about. Photography is an art form. Lenses are a little bit like artist brushes. I know that sounds a bit pretentious, but they really are a tool that we can use. So that's about it from me for now. Many, many thanks to everybody who 
tunes in and watches. Many, many thanks to everybody who subscribes and to everybody who's lent me lenses. I really do appreciate uh, the input that you guys have. It's really fantastic. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time for some more xenography. <laughs>